WATD-FM Marshfield, streaming 24-7 at 95.9WATD.com. Welcome to the Natural Health and Healing Show with one of New England's leading nutritionists, Mark Mincola. The show is brought to you by the Good Health Stores in Hanover and Quincy. Call Mark at 781-837-4900 with your health and nutrition questions. Now, here's Mark. Good evening and welcome. What an absolutely spectacular day today. Lovely, lovely fall weather. I I guess it's still summer, kind of. I mean... (laughs) It's, it, it is, but it isn't, I, I guess I'd say. And Catherine Foley is, of course, back in studio. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> how, how was your, your week off? It was wonderful. Great. I spent some time in the woods, <laughs> you know, reconnecting and dirt roads. Fantastic. It was really nice. Well, you missed a fun uh, program last week. We had, yeah. uh, of course, Pat Olson on, and we were absolutely swamped with calls. I we bet. had uh, quite a few calls even that we couldn't handle, and I've gotten a zillion emails, and uh, unfortunately, the first half of the broadcast, I gave out the wrong uh. web address for her. So, <laughs> for those of you who did listen to uh, good friend Pat Olson last week, she was spectacular, spot she's, on as usual. She's amazing. She is indeed amazing. She, of course, is an intuitive who is a very dear friend of mine who just moved back up here from Texas, and uh, she's done um, intuitive work believe it or not folks for the fbi the department of the navy the united nations she's just really gifted and uh, a lot of folks are of course really interested in getting a contact uh, uh, number or a contact uh, website so i do have that correct website i'll give it out to you right now if you got a pen and paper handy it's a reading by pat one word a reading by pat.com simple enough so uh, for those of you who want to contact her, feel free to do so. Uh, we have some interesting things to chat about with you this evening uh, regarding health and whatnot. Um, I don't know how many people are aware of the fact that uh, earlier this year, 2008, the, uh, uh, the um, government es- essentially decided that uh, it was, you know, the FDA sat down and said, geez, you know, there's nothing wrong with cloned meat and cloned milk. Yeah. Um, so they certainly feel comfortable with genetically modified foods, considering that 73% of the foods that are circulating out there are genetically modified. Right. Um, so apparently they feel the same way about cloning animals for uh, sale. Um, and when you find out the real interesting skinny on all this stuff, you kind of feel a little bit upset, a little bit ripped off about it. So we're going to talk a little bit about it. Uh, the fact that indeed in January, I believe it's the 6th of January this past year, uh, it was decided again by the government, by the FDA, uh, that indeed it was perfectly fine uh, that uh, the meats uh, that are marketed and the milks that are marketed uh, be cloned if in fact uh, the decision is made by uh, independent companies to in fact do so. Um, So there are uh, those in the know at this point in time that say we're probably about 18 to 24 months away oh from seeing cloned meat and cloned milk oh my goodness. on the shelves in the marketplace. Uh, so I was going to talk a little bit about that. Also, um, you know, during the course of the week, I do some a little bit of corporate consulting work, and um, it's really kind of fun because it sort of forces you to have to do a little bit of searching, a little bit of research, which is always a good thing. And I sort of tripped into the... Uh, uh, the ORAC factor information, yeah. a lot of the interesting latest information on the oxygen radical antagonist capacity right. and uh, the absorbency capacity, rather. And, and what it really is uh, boiling down to is is they're, they're really rating foods now. Right. And we're getting real specific readings uh, in terms of numbers. Right. Um, and the long and short of it is is when you take the single most powerful antioxidant-rich food of all the foods that have been evaluated, the single highest ORAC factor, antioxidant-rich food that uh, is, for all intents and purposes, capable of protecting you from cancer, heart disease, etc., are lentils. Wow. Lentils are on the tippity-top. I actually had lentil soup today. There you go. Well, so did I, as a matter of fact. (laughs) 
I really did. True story. So did I. <laughs> well, that's kismet if, <laughs> if there ever if there ever was. And, and um, you know, the just to give you some numerical appreciation yeah. of the power, uh, the relative numbers here that um, <clears throat> they measure this this capacity, this ability to really uh, render a powerful antioxidant, uh, immune enhancing. Uh, protective support wow. the the numbers that they uh, that they found for uh, lentils were 17,000 wow and number two were wild blueberries okay. at uh, you know like 14,700 or something like that so you know the foods that were really really high in antioxidants are 17,000 15 14 11 down to about 7,500 or so right. then you look over at the spices yeah yeah Okay, cloves, 359,000. I said 359,000. When the highest food is at 17, folks. Wow. And the highest spice is at 359. And we always talk about uh, the medicinal importance of turmeric, for example. Right. Turmeric was 159,000. Wow. So you'd have to eat an awful lot of blueberries. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Well, so one of the points that I made in my class this week uh, in the corporate setting was I said, folks, you know, if you want a really good tip and you're looking to boost your immune system. Spice up your life. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> get purchase organic spices. Yeah, if you sure. don't purchase organic foods, the one thing you want to purchase organically, for crying out loud, is going to has got to be your spices. Yeah, because a lot of spices are irritated. They're irritated, yeah. absolutely. And, uh, you know, the other thing is, is they're highly... Uh, polluted with an awful lot of uh, yeah. pesticides etc yeah. so you know i think when you're when you're thinking about the potential antioxidant punch mm-hmm. the power you get with these incredible spices that's amazing you know and you think garlic's probably way up there well garlic's got about uh, you know 110,000 but again 359,000 for cloves <laughs> turmeric 159,000 uh-huh. um but but virtually all of the spices that you can think of all wow. of them even the you know, the, the seemingly benign spices, if you think about things like parsley, right? okay, or, um, you know, some of the, uh, the the flowered herbs, for example, they're extremely high. They're all in the hundreds of thousands. Wow. So absolutely right. important to make sure that uh, you use a little bit of herbs, a little bit of spices, and purchase them organically so that you don't cancel out their medicinal powers. Right, right. And to, and to use these whole foods. My, the other thought I have about this is this is really a powerful picture that I have in mind of, of these foods, rendering these powerful numbers. What do these numbers really translate to? If right. you think about it, an antioxidant is a molecular donor. Mm-hmm. Okay, so in other words, when you and I are being attacked 30,000 times a day, which, by the way, is the number that's been estimated, we receive yeah. 30,000 DNA hits a day. And growing. 30,000 <laughs> and growing. So when your poor, healthy cells are getting beat up like that every day, it's really important to have a mediator step in and defend and protect them. Absolutely. And that's what these antioxidant molecules do from these spices, from the wild blueberries, from your wholesome foods. Now, at the end of a given week, month, or year, the average person is eating a lot of dead filler foods. Mm, yeah, You know, absolutely. a whole lot of uh, Starch potato and, chips and yeah. yada, yada, yada. And I'm thinking that every time they're filling up calorically on these empty mm-hmm. calories, they're depriving their cells an opportunity to be well protected against the 30,000 DNA hits they get a day. Yeah, absolutely. And why are we surprised when someone is diagnosed early in life with a disease? Yeah. We've got the protection that nature provided us with these numbers are very powerful they're accumulative yeah build them up folks yeah build them up and the great nutrition tip again is you you want to get the organic spices yeah. and start using more spices in your foods yeah really important news and you can do so many amazing things with them with um you know the turmeric and the you can you know, take these spices and, you know, make popcorn, organic popcorn, sure you, can. you know, throw a little bit of coconut oil on there when you're roasting it and then throw the spices on there and Absolutely. you have an amazing, like, high potency snack. Well, and again, I think, you know, you mentioned lentils. How about curried lentils? Love it. Okay, <laughs> because if you're, you're talking curried lentils, you're yeah. talking about double the antioxidant punch. You've got the highest antioxidant-rich food of all right. with, with lentils. Then you throw in a little bit of that curry, which have which 
which has turmeric, and you've got, you know, in excess of 400,000 uh, ORAC units. I mean, and that's pretty powerful food right there. Yeah, and then with the lentils, they're high protein, too. Absolutely. So, uh, I mean, that's a really great... People don't necessarily get enough protein in their diets as well, so it's high antioxidant, high protein, you know. Absolutely good. true. Absolutely true. Okay, well, uh, Catherine Foley, thank you uh, <laughs> thank for you. that little bit. You know, let's stick around a while. We'll talk, okay. Let's talk nutrition tonight. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back after this little break, and you stay right where you are. Right in our area, we are fortunate to have one of the top martial arts schools in the country, Personal Best Karate. Personal Best has been recognized for their community involvement, professional staff development, character building programs, and exciting educational curriculum. Personal Best stands at the top of their industry. Five locations offering personalized professional instruction. Not sure if karate is right for you? At no obligation, the staff at Personal Best will guide you in a private introductory program to see if karate is indeed the right fit to help you achieve your goals and meet your needs. What does karate at Personal Best teach you? Character building, success habits, helps you get in shape, relieve stress, self-control, setting goals, and of course, self-defense. Personal Best goal is to create successful, contributing members of society through the practice of the martial arts at Personal Best. Mr. Chris Rappold is, of course, the founder of Personal Best Karate. He tells me his greatest joy of all is to see the personal transformation in each and every student. Bring out your best with Personal Best Karate. Telephone number 508-285-5425. That's 508-285-5425. Locations in Norton, Foxborough, Southeastern, Franklin, and Taunton. That's Personal Best Karate. This segment is being sponsored by Good Health Natural Foods. Good Health is a well-established organic specialty food market as well as a vitamin and sports nutrition shop. Good Health is a family-owned business passionately committed to giving back to the neighborhoods of Boston and the South Shore. The Maturos and the entire Good Health family continue to make an indelible impact on the communities they serve. There are currently two extraordinary stores, 1627 Hancock Street, Quincy, Mass., and 219 Columbia Road, Route 53 in Hanover, Mass. For everything natural, organic, and wheat or gluten-free, it's Good Health Natural Foods, open seven days a week in Quincy, 617-773-4925, and Hanover, 781-826-0808. That's Good Health Natural Foods. All righty, welcome back. Uh, by the way, the Healthy Living magazine is quite lovely, is it not? I mean, Candida did it. She outdid herself this uh, this month. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Well, she has an amazing article in there, the vaccine issue. Fantastic. Learn the facts about the HPV vaccination yeah. uh, because the risks are not always so obvious. Great magazine, and it's, again, the fall 2008 issue of Healthy Living yeah. And uh, she just recently broke through up in New Hampshire as well. So congratulations hey. to Candida for that. <laughs> Moving on, girl. Mark, I have to tell you the funniest thing. I was watching TV and I saw a commercial. And um, this woman was handing her neighbor a kind of like container of fruit juice. Mm-hmm. And the woman was like, isn't that Kool-Aid? Doesn't that have high fructose corn <laughs> syrup in it? Oh, I don't want that. And then the lady was like, why don't you want high fructose corn syrup? It's good for you. It's, you know, a natural product. It's lower in calories. It's this, it's that. And it was an ad put on by the high fructose or the fruit the corn syrup Are association of america it was nothing like a little propaganda film. yeah yeah so How fantastic is that so it's what know. it shows you is it shows you that we're having an effect yeah it yeah. shows you that they're feeling the heat <laughs> yeah. because they have to come out and they have to basically somehow find a way to offset yeah that's, and that's great news. There's another one that they did out there, and it's a, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend, and she's like, you know, here's a popsicle, and he's like, does that have high fructose corn syrup in it? And she's like, yeah, and he's like, don't you love me? And then she goes, explains it. It's just wild. And so with Candida's article, the HPV, you know, vaccine, it's just really what the article that she did is just so important because it's really important for people to keep an objective 
mind about some of the information that we're being fed, you know? Well, it's, it's, it's so important just to at least present the other side of the story, yeah, too, yeah. because it seems like, um, you know, well, for years we only got one side of mm -hmm. virtually every story. So at long last now we're starting to, uh, to find the other side of the story. And, yeah. and indeed that article is very well written and it's uh, a great representation of yeah. the whole picture. So mm -hmm. pick up on it. The magazine's looking great. Now, you, you can't stick around tonight. You're going away for a little while is that right <laughs> yeah i am going away for a little while i just tried to sneak out of here <laughs> just tried it didn't to sneak work. out of here and it didn't work so <laughs> no. we're, we're gonna give you a loophole here okay we're gonna you. let you sneak out but it was great to see you <laughs> and you um, enjoy montreal uh we miss you and and other spots along the way thank you have a great uh, a great you'll be learning a great deal again to bring back for us right again yeah we're going to the bone mineral um conference so we're going to learn you know all the new great stuff about bone mineral density and osteoporosis and so we'll get the latest and greatest on <coughs> how to hold these bones together yeah, yeah absolutely. fantastic well with so many folks concerned about uh, bone yeah. density problems osteoporosis that'll be welcome information yeah, so can't we can't wait to get it back thank you so much all right have a great trip thanks mark thank you so much all right we're going to basically chit chat with you this evening about a couple interesting things one as i mentioned earlier is the united states food and drug administration earlier this year decided that clone Cloned livestock, cloned livestock is virtually indistinguishable, as they say, from conventional livestock. And uh, the Food and Drug Administration will not, folks, be requiring any special labeling whatsoever. Uh, consumers are just going to have to be uh, having a product uh, that is potentially uh, unsafe or certainly uh, a product that they may or may not know is potentially unsafe because the debate rages on. There certainly are those folks uh, uh, who believe that uh, it is not safe. And um, specifically, there is a, a, a report that I read from uh, a Dr. David Hillis, who is a professor of biology, uh, I'm sorry, professor of biological science at uh, the University of Texas in Austin. He's also a uh, geneticist and a breeder um, of cattle. And he says that there are very high rates of infection, compromised immune systems, and uh, said that serial cloning will produce very serious mutations. And uh, there's a great deal of uh, questioning as to uh, whether or not we should indeed uh, be, I, I guess I'd say, left on an island here because it's one thing for the FDA to decide that uh, cloned beef and cloned dairy products uh, are no different, as they said, indistinguishable, virtually indistinguishable from conventional livestock. That was their wording. The bottom line of it, as far as I'm concerned, is they do not require labeling. I mean, I just feel like uh, the last time I checked that there was something called informed uh, consent, and uh, I feel like you and I deserve informed consent. And surely as consumers, we have the right to know what indeed we're eating and what our children are eating. So uh, if folks are really interested in following a little bit more about that, of course, there's a remarkable website that is the uh, Center for Food Safety, Joseph Mendelson, who's, uh, who heads up that particular group. Fantastic group, and uh, their website address is www.centerforfoodsafety.org. Once again, www.centerforfoodsafety.org. And uh, earlier this year, as I say, the FDA uh, did indeed decide in their imminent <laughs> wisdom that... Uh, that this uh, cloned livestock uh, was perfectly fine for uh, the marketplace. It has not entered into the marketplace yet. There's um, an awful lot of floating going on right now. By that, I mean the food industries are essentially floating the opinion concepts out there to see what the consumer's opinions are about the concept of cloned food. And uh, they're obviously very surprised to find that the uh, public is shocked and very negative about it. So uh, since January of this year, there has been no major push from the food industry to indeed introduce cloned beef or cloned dairy products into the marketplace, even though the FDA said, if you want to go ahead and do that, be my guest. 
Uh, however, uh, all those in the know uh, have said that there's probably about 18 to 24 months now uh, whereby we can expect cloned meats and cloned dairy products or cloned livestock to finally find their way onto our market shelves. And uh, there's, again, an executive summary report that was recently published by the Center for Food Safety by Joseph Mendelson. And um, in their report, in their executive summary, they go on to say that the FDA found no peer-reviewed studies on meat from cloned cows uh, or on milk meat from the offspring of cloned cows. FDA found no peer-reviewed studies on meat from cloned pigs or offspring. The FDA found no peer-reviewed studies on meat or milk from cloned goats or their offspring. And the FDA found just three peer-reviewed studies on milk from cloned cows. All three studies showed differences in milk from clones that should have prompted further research. Uh, so despite the FDA's claim that there is no difference between food from clones and their progeny and food from natural fed in natural bread and natural fed animals. Most of these studies they reviewed found troubling abnormalities and defects in the animal clones, which could pose food safety risks. And uh, they go on to say that evidence from the agency's own report and from other scientists show that cloning does not produce identical twins and that cloning, therefore, may not be useful in breeding. In fact, studies have found that clones from the same different uh, same parent differ significantly from each other and from their parent animal. A recent scientific study concluded that scientists and breeders agree that cloning may not be useful for livestock uh, production. The FDA review contradicts itself, first claiming that genetically defective clones will pose no risk to food supply because the sick animals will be detected and removed, but then admitting that some sick and defective clones may in fact end up as food. The FDA says the defects seen in clones also occur in natural reproduction, differing only by degree in clones, but the agency also finds several defects in clones that are rarely or never seen in normal animals. For example, one common abnormality in clones that can result in stillbirth or early death or death of a mother occurs in normal cows only once in every 7,500 instances, while it may occur up to 40% two percent of cloned cows while the fda claims that improvement in cloning technology is resulting in better success rates for clones a 2005 scientific review found that the success rate in cloning remains less than five percent yet the fda found that it was absolutely no different to compare conventional livestock from cloned livestock uh, which, again, is only half the story. To me, the other half the story is uh, the complete obliteration of informed consent because the FDA will not require any special labeling. And uh, consumers, in my opinion, uh, deserve informed consent through uh, the labeling and the posting of which of these potential foods that you will be passing by in the marketplace are indeed cloned, at least you will have a choice. But uh, you know what's, what this is all about. This is all about government supporting big business. And it's really uh, something whereby we uh, should indeed, I think, raise up our interests and, uh, and question this process and become more educated about this process. And if you're interested in doing that, uh, again, I would urge you to contact the Center for Food Safety. And uh, their website, again, is www.centerforfoodsafety.org. I'll give you their phone number as well because uh, you could actually call down there and speak to a representative. It's uh, the area code 202-547-9352. Uh, Once again, 202-547-9359. And that's the Center for Food Safety. Um, there's uh, an interesting article that appeared, I don't know if, uh, I'm sure many of you have taken a peek at it, but it, it was uh, earlier this year in Newsweek magazine. And uh, the title of this Newsweek article written by uh, Fred Guterl, G-U-T-E-R-L, Guterl, is, Would You Like Fries With Your Clone? <laughs> 
European and U.S. food safety agencies have deemed cloned pigs and cows safe to eat. Should we all become vegetarians? Um, it's a very interesting article. It's actually very well crafted. Um, and it talks a great deal about the livestock, livestock industry. Um, he goes on to say that uh, on a U.S. farm, a good cow can fetch about $1,000 on the butcher block. Uh, on such an animal, there's no point in using cloning, which can cost $20,000 a pop. However, an elite cow, one whose genes are optimized for producing the healthiest, longest living, and most productive offspring, can fetch more than $100,000. <laughs> so, uh, once again, if a standard, uh, if, a, if standard livestock, if a cow uh, that is not cloned can generally... Uh, draw a thousand dollars on the butcher block and if a an optimized cow that is genetically optimized uh, has highly productive offspring offspring um, then we're talking about a one hundred thousand dollar cow and uh, obviously that's exactly <laughs> what this is all about what what a surprise uh, so there's basically a one hundred percent potential difference in profit margin here between a cow that is uh, more or less standard livestock uh, versus one that is genetically optimized uh, and cloned. So with these kind of price tags and with these kind of uh, economic considerations, uh, there's going to be an awful lot of new research about genetics, about cloning. There's going to be an awful lot of paid-for science and uh, it's going to get very, very hot and heavy over the next couple of years. But this is a two-year estimate right now that we're looking at, a window of two years that many of the experts are estimating that, uh, that really just kind of came into play earlier this year. So, uh, again, I would urge people to get interested and uh, to start researching this because, uh, you know, we talked about genetically modified food you know, the produce that we're all uh, consuming these days is being uh, a battleground that uh, we really needed to pay attention to five, six, seven, eight years ago. And uh, apparently no one did pay enough attention to it because 73% of the food that's in the marketplace right now is genetically modified. And for the first three years or so, four years of their marketing, there were no labels, so you couldn't tell what was genetically modified and what wasn't. Uh, so at least thankfully now we uh, have the benefit of labeling laws. took a while for that to come to pass and an awful lot of pressure. Um, but nonetheless, we at least have some idea about which foods uh, that we're uh, pur purchasing out there are genetically modified and which ones are not. At least we have that ability to uh, make an educated decision about these things. But the new, battle new battleground is, uh, is all about livestock. And over the next two years, it's going to come to pass. So if you want to have a say in it, uh, you better research it. Now's the time to get involved. Now's the time to educate yourself. Uh, because uh, the boat's in, and it's going to be pulling out in the next 18 to 24 months. So, again, I urge everybody to get in touch with uh, www.centerforfoodsafety.org. And uh, we're going to take a short little break, and we'll be right back. Stay right where you are. <laughs> And this is Catherine from Jaro Formulas. We're happy to announce our new partnership with Dr. Mark Mancola. When we started out in this industry, our intentions were to bring good quality nutrition, cutting edge science, and reasonably priced products to the market, and also encourage people to take an active role in their own health and wellness. Jaro Formulas has been in business for over 20 years and is considered an industry leader. Jaro is incredibly active in consumers' rights to access dietary supplements and creating good quality manufacturing standards for our industry. When we first met Dr. Mincola, we knew that we had a true partner and an ally in the mission of creating a happy, healthy, and wealthy New England through the sharing of knowledge and enthusiasm for health and healing. And we're excited for the world of knowledge that there is that we can share with you all. As we take this journey together with great partners, great energy, and looking forward to a great future for all of those that are encouraged to come along. This segment is being sponsored by Good Health Natural Foods. Good Health is a well-established organic specialty food market as well as a vitamin and sports nutrition shop. 
Good Health is a family-owned business passionately committed to giving back to the neighborhoods of Boston and the South Shore. The Maturos and the entire Good Health family continue to make an indelible impact on the communities they serve. There are currently two extraordinary stores, 1627 Hancock Street, Quincy, Mass., and 219 Columbia Road, Route 53 in Hanover, Mass. For everything natural, organic, and wheat or gluten-free, it's Good Health Natural Foods, open seven days a week in Quincy, 617-773-4925, and Hanover, 781-826-0808. That's Good Health Foods. All right, welcome back. And uh, we've been uh, talking talking this evening a little bit about uh, food safety, and I kind of want to bounce back and forth here. We also talked a little bit earlier about antioxidants, and, you know, food is medicine, certainly in, in my world it is. So uh, we want to kind of talk about it from the perspective of both, um, you know, food safety, protecting yourself, defending yourself, as well as uh, from the perspective of uh, how to increase your immunity how to support your immune system, how to make yourself stronger, how to lower the risks of um, problems with uh, colds, flus, especially as we get into the winter months, allergies, and even more serious issues, heart disease, cancer, etc. And uh, food is a very important player in all of that, as you well know. And uh, Good Health Natural Foods is certainly a really important supplier as far as that goes. Uh, when you talk about the supplements that they have, the antioxidants, uh, the fish oils, the vitamin A, the vitamin E, the, uh, they've got the gamma E, they've got uh, all the minerals, selenium and zinc, etc. And Good Health Natural Foods is really like a natural pharmacy. You know, um, if you venture out to various other health food stores in the area, I'm sure you have. Um, they may have uh, an awful lot of terrific displays, great music, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Good health is really down to uh, the nuts and bolts of real solid, solid nutrition. And uh, you're certainly going to uh, benefit from their remarkable supply of supplements. And again, they are, for all intents and purposes, they are the South Shore's apothecary for natural medicine. And uh, also, you know, when you talk about organic produce, you know, one of the things we mentioned earlier is, uh, you know, that a lot of your foods are becoming really intoxicated. Your foods are becoming, unfortunately, the late great foods of planet Earth because they're being genetically modified. You know, the average person is, uh, is unaware of the fact that 73% of the foods out there are already modified genetically, uh, you know, and, and that can mean an awful lot of problems. I see people all day long, all week long, that have food allergies, very serious, serious food allergies. And a lot of them is, are from cross-referencing. In other words, if you think about somebody who may be allergic to uh, strawberries and they're actually eating some fish that actually has been cross-geneticized with some gene in strawberries that preserve the strawberries from, from freezing, uh, or vice versa. So I think, you know, when you consider that you're cross-geneticizing a lot of these foods, you're not just getting the food that, that is uh, labeled. You're getting the food that, uh, that it's been crossed with, or f plural, foods that it has been crossed with. So you're trying to protect yourself from food allergies, food intolerances. You're trying to control and to regulate with awareness exactly what you're consuming so that you can safely proceed with your diet. Uh, but unbeknownst to you, there are various foods that are being uh, sort of blended in with the food that you're purchasing. So, uh, yes, I am going to take some calls, Dave. As a matter of fact, I, I, that's probably a good idea. Um, let me give out the uh, phone number again here is 781-837-4900. That's, again, 781-837-4900. Any questions about your nutrition, any questions about health issues and natural healing issues, fire away. And uh, once again, we'd like to thank Good Health Natural Foods for supplying the South Shore with organic produce and with wonderful antioxidants. And, of course, there are two great stores. They're down in Hanover, 219 Columbia Road, 781-826-0808. Zero eight, and of course that is Route Fifty Three. Or you Anybody. might hook up with, hook up with them down in uh, Quincy. At, uh, Mark, we yeah. have uh, Joan from Situate. We could do that. Joan, how are you? Fine, Mark. How are you? Terrific. Welcome. 
I have a friend that was suffering terribly today from allergies mm -hmm. and wanted to know if there's any natural remedies that you could recommend. He says that he's uh, worked up a intolerance to Claritin. Yes. I'm tired of that. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, there's a couple things we can think about there. First of all, you know, we think about histamines, of course, because uh, whenever uh, folks are sneezing and they get the watery eyes and the typical symptoms of allergies, one of the things that your body does is it produces this very unfriendly reaction called histamine response. And many of the medicines out there over the counter, of course, are antihistamines. Yes. I mean, they shut down your body's secretion of these histamines. And technically, these histamines, even though they're very unpleasant, Joan, are designed to kind of work for you. Because they figure if, you know what, we're taking this toxin in our body called ragweed or goldenrod or whatever it might be or mold, uh, we want you to get away from it. We want you to do something about it. So we're going to trigger all these alarms. And, of course, your body's natural alarms are watery eyes, sneezing, et cetera, et cetera. So that's your body's alarm system. And I always ask folks, what would you do if in the middle of the night your smoke alarm went off and you just kind of decided that it was rude and waking you up in the middle of the night and you knocked it off the wall? Right. Not a good thing, folks. So you don't want to just shut off the alarm system without paying attention to what it's trying to alarm you to. So obviously there's exposures out there, especially this time of year. There's a lot of mold. There's a lot of uh, ragweed. And uh, there's certainly a lot of goldenrod right now. But my suggestion is that your friend try some quercetin, Q-U-E-R-C-E-T-I-N, quercetin. Yes. And the one that I like is the N-O-W brand. Okay. And there's four, there are 400 milligram uh, capsules. I'd recommend three a day. Um, the other thing I'd recommend also is there uh, are some great homeopathics. Uh, out there. And I like the bio allers, B I O A L L E R S. And those are drops. And you can get uh, pollen, you can get mold, yeast mold dust. I'd recommend two this time of year. I'd recommend the yeast mold drops, the I'm sorry, the yeast mold dust drops for one. That's just one tincture, yeast mold dust. That's one. The second one would be pollen. And I would recommend uh, 10 to maybe 12 drops under the tongue three times a day for both of those. So okay. quercetin, Q-U-E-R-C-E-T-I-N by N-O-W brand, 400 milligrams, three a day. Right. And then two tincture bottles, little dropper bottles, the bioallers pollen and the bioallers um, yeast mold dust drops and it would be roughly 10, 10 drops. drops under the tongue how many times a day? Yeah, 10, 10 to 12 drops three times a day under the tongue. Thank you very much. My pleasure. All right. Take care. And, yes, a lot of folks are, of course, experiencing a lot of allergies this time of year. One of them is Candida, and she's allergic to my program. That's why she was so late coming in. So uh, where the heck were you? I was at good health. Yeah, sure you were. <laughs> Justin. Good answer. <laughs> Hot <laughs> off the presses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like, this is the first time I've been late. <laughs> I had to give the addresses and the phone numbers, and you were supposed to memorize them this week. I know. I was in the hallway studying. <laughs> Criminy. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's good to see you. Your magazine looks spectacular. Oh, thank you. There were a couple of things I wanted to mention as well. We'll have to get to that. We're doing a couple of workshops together. Good, which good. Which is exciting. Excellent. Um, but, no, seriously, this just in, Good Health is looking for a couple of... Um, Employees. Oh, good. Floor assistant at the Quincy store, pricing associate and cashier at the Hanover store, another floor associate at the Hanover store, and a cashier in the Quincy location. So if anybody out there is interested in a great career... Couldn't work for better people. Yeah, they're wonderful. They have um, compensation packages, health insurance, 401k. Fantastic. Great stuff. They also um, offer, like... Um, for gym facilities to go and work out and stuff like Great. that. Great. Little program. And you certainly are going to learn an awful lot there. That's right. Wow. Did, didn't you didn't you hire somebody from there? Yeah, I have in the past. And, and you know, the Isn't people the people at Good Health are so crackerjack. I mean, they hire folks uh, that are interested in learning more, and they really do educate them. They really beef them up. So uh, they know what they're doing down there. They really understand uh, the trends in natural medicine. They understand the trends in organic produce, et cetera, et cetera. And all these topics we talk about on the Natural Health and Healing Show are topics that uh, the folks at Good Health Natural Foods are all very 
very familiar with. So uh, whoever those fortunate employees are, they're going to learn an awful lot. Oh, absolutely. That's just great. Um, and then they, of course, have their um, September specials out, which is always nice to have. They have everything you want. That's what it says. That's Let's a see, everything that you want. Let me take a look at this. Uh, the nuts and pomegranate juice, yeah. pomegranate juice, five ninety nine. Where do you get it like that? I mean, it's so Amazing. affordable. And Amazing. I love this place. How about the Barleen's flax? It's seven ninety nine for a hundred caps. Extra virgin olive oil for nine dollars and sixty nine cents. Wow. Unrefined, a twenty five ounce bottle. That's great, and we've yeah. talked about GABA on the program quite a bit because mm -hmm. uh, GABA is naturally produced by the human brain, and it really is your body's natural tranquilizer for those periods where you're over-exciting your nerves from stress. Mm -hmm. So it is the preeminent anti-stress chemical that's produced naturally in your body, and if you want to increase it, you can take uh, three 500-milligram capsules a day and they've got it at nine dollars and ninety nine cents for a hundred caps, five hundred milligrams now brand GABA. That's fantastic. Yeah, I love the now brand. It's so affordable. It sure it's is a great product. And those organic blue corn chips. My kids love those. Two ninety nine Garden of Eaton. And Jaro formulas. We Catherine right. would be uh, she'd be uh, upset with us if we didn't mention the Q Absorb which is uh, the very finest state-of-the-art CoQ10. So for folks that are taking CoQ10, they're not all the same, folks. You know that. Ubiquinone is what you want. And uh, the Q-Absorb is the highest level of ubiquinone, 100 milligrams. Great, great stuff. Twenty-seven ninety-nine. That's really a great price that is for, good price. for for for, yeah. for a mm. very superb supplement that's generally very overpriced. That's really good. So uh, tell them, where is uh, Good Health Natural Foods? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm studying in the hallway. <laughs> Can I read it here? 219 <laughs> Columbia Road, Route 53 in Hanover. 781-826-0808. And 1627 Hancock Street in Quincy. 617-773-4925. All right, now next week I'm going to take Mark the... Mark stole my I'm going to take the, the, the ad copy right out of your hands next week. <laughs> So tell me about this magazine. Oh, the fall semester to educate and enlighten. Fantastic. We're so excited that you're going to be doing a ton of seminars with us. Um, Nutrition, Beauty, and Vitality is the first one, September 29th. That's going to be at the Armand Spa in Kingston. Mm -hmm. Weight Loss, Nutrition for Thyroid and Metabolism is going to be at Uplifting Connections in Bridgewater, and that's mm -hmm. October 27th. Mm -hmm. Food as Medicine for the Family. You've always done Food as Medicine, but this one's a little different, and I'm, I love it. It's I look great. forward to that. November 3rd, and that's going to be at the South Shore YMCA in great. Hanover. Great, great. Maximum Nutrition on Mood on November 17th at Lu Uplifting Connections in Bridgewater. Mm -hmm. December 1st, Optimal Nutrition for Women. And that's again at the YMCA. And December 15th, this is a great one, Personal Hair Analysis with Interpretation. Right. So each person that comes gets a, uh, we'll have to know beforehand right. if you're coming on December 15th and we'll actually give you the hair analysis. Right. And then pH balance on January 5th at the Y. And, it, you know, if folks are interested in taking a look at all of these different presentations and deciding uh, which one they might be most interested in or which one is closest uh, to their community, mm -hmm. they can actually go on our website. They mm -hmm. can check it out at www.maxhealing.com. Just Excellent. one word, maxhealing.com, because they're all on there. And uh, you can pick out whatever uh, of these seminars that uh, you might be most interested in. Absolutely. And the magazine looks spectacular. And uh, how are things going in New Hampshire? Great. So you got, you've got... Uh, both New Hampshire and Massachusetts rocking now. New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Vermont. I didn't know you were doing Vermont. We didn't know either until oh, this boy. week. <laughs> so we are getting out there. Yeah, I guess someone from Vermont caught when we're doing New Hampshire, and they want to just Fantastic. piggyback right on board and do it. won't be long before you're in 50 states, yeah. uh, 11 countries, <laughs> and 6 continents. Yeah, and this is a great issue. I wouldn't put it past Candida, believe and me. And where can you find healthy living? <laughs> well, let me give you those addresses again. <laughs> <laughs> 219 Columbia Road and 1627 <laughs> Hancock Street in Quincy. Good health, natural foods, candida mammoth, unbeatable combination. 
<laughs> You're a Thanks, powerhouse. Mark. Amazing stuff. Thank you so All much. Right, and there's your copy. Thank you. I'll sign it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, thank you so much, Candida. And we are going to take a short little break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Right in our area, we are fortunate to have one of the top martial arts schools in the country. Personal Best Karate. Personal Best has been recognized for their community involvement, professional staff development, character building programs, and exciting educational curriculum. Personal Best stands at the top of their industry. Five locations offering personalized professional instruction. Not sure if karate is right for you? At no obligation, the staff at Personal Best will guide you in a private introductory program to see if karate is indeed the right fit to help you achieve your goals and meet your needs. What does karate at Personal Best teach you? Character building, success habits, helps you get in shape, relieve stress, self-control, setting goals, and of course, self-defense. Personal Best goal is to create successful, contributing members of society through the practice of the martial arts at Personal Best. Mr. Chris Rappold is, of course, the founder of Personal Best Karate. He tells me his greatest joy of all is to see the personal transformation in each and every student. Bring out your best with Personal Best Karate. Telephone number 508-285-5425. That's 508 285 5425. Locations in Norton, Foxborough, Southeastern, Franklin, and Taunton. That's personal best. Hi, and this is Catherine from Jaro Formulas. We're happy to announce our new partnership with Dr. Mark Mincola. When we started out in this industry, our intentions were to bring good quality nutrition, cutting edge science, and reasonably priced products to the market, and also encourage people to take an active role in their own health and wellness. Jaro Formulas has been in business for over 20 years and is considered an industry leader. Jaro is incredibly active in consumers' rights to access dietary supplements and creating good quality manufacturing standards for our industry. When we first met Dr. Mincola, we knew that we had a true partner and an ally in the mission of creating a happy, healthy, and wealthy New England through the sharing of knowledge and enthusiasm for health and healing. And we're excited for the world of knowledge that there is that we can share with you all. As we take this journey together with great partners, great energy, and looking forward to a great future for all of those that are encouraged to come along. All righty, welcome back in. And, you know, as we said earlier, we, we really want to emphasize that uh, many of the common foods that uh, you will find in the marketplace out there um, are extremely high in antioxidants. There are two different uh, sites that I went to this week. I went to uh, um, Department of Agriculture uh, site, uh, and I also went to the National Institute of Health site. Now, the Department of Agriculture really goes about rating the foods <clears throat> excuse me, that we eat at the uh, antioxidant level. In other words, they feel that you know, the, the, simply the antioxidant ratings are the most uh, viable, most important ratings at determining uh, the most powerful medicinal and healthy foods that keep us protected from uh, various diseases. But the National Institute of Health came up with this other factor called ORAC, which is oxygen radical absorbance. Oxygen radical absorbency. So, um, you know, it's, it's the manner in which uh, our foods produce these sponge-like molecules that soak up problem molecules that create disease. So the National Institute of Health's ORAC factor is the one that I find most fascinating. And I would urge you to do a little bit of research on, do some searching on ORAC, ORAC factor. Um, and it's really, really fascinating. But again, you know, when you think about the fact that one, two, three, four, four of the top 20 foods, four of the top 20 foods were beans, were beans. Lentils were the top, red kidney beans, um, I'm sorry, red beans, kidney beans, and black beans. So in both the Department of Agriculture's antioxidant report 
In the National Institute of Health's ORAC report, you've got one, two, three, four of the top 20 foods are beans. So for folks out there that are considering uh, maybe shifting a gear and occasionally going vegan, now that doesn't mean you've got to go hardcore vegan, but it means that you know the proteins that you and I are accustomed to eating uh, poultry and fish and whatnot, we know that there's nutrients in fish, for example, the omega-3s uh, and vitamin D and vitamin A, et cetera. Uh, we also know that, um, uh, that um, you know, there's a good quality of protein with um, certain poultry, et cetera. But there really isn't the same antioxidant supply. These living foods, and then there's your, there's your distinction between living foods and dead foods. But the living foods... You know, your produce, which is still alive, as long as there's color in that food, that food is technically still alive, even though it's off the vine, off the tree. That food is still alive until it rots. Uh, So you still have a living supply of antioxidants and, as we say, oxygen radical absorbency components. So the idea that uh, your proteins that are vegan-type proteins, like lentils, red beans, kidney beans, black beans, adzuki beans, chickpeas, hummus, all these great things. These are vegan-type or vegetarian-type proteins that, unlike unlike the meats that are our most common proteins, are very rich not just in proteins but antioxidants. There you have it. So when you think about lentils at 17,000, it's a pretty high number. Uh, red beans, kidney beans, black beans. In addition, the other foods that were very, very high were wild raspberries. Um, they were actually three places ahead of the uh, cultivated raspberries, you know, the ones that are uh, not wild, the ones that are farmed or grown. Uh, but blue, uh, blueberries, I'm sorry, blueberries are uh, the highest of all the berries. So wild blueberries were the highest of all your fruits followed by virtually all the different types of apples. So virtually every different type of apple known to man was certainly uh, in those upper categories as well. So um, just to really underscore the key foods, beans were certainly on the top of the list, blueberries were right there, and virtually all the apples were right there with it. And... um, you know, I think that the key really here is is that all of these living foods, as we said earlier, are extremely high in antioxidants and oxygen radical absorbance. Uh, and these are the living foods that absolutely will will render your protection against various diseases. No, no ifs, ands, or buts. We've often seen some remarkable studies. We've brought a number of great antioxidant studies in here, and uh, you wouldn't have to look very hard to find Uh, brand new studies, but we've certainly talked about the raspberry studies, the elogic acid studies that were done uh, down at the University of South Carolina Medical School at the Hollings Cancer Institute over the years. Um, I've spoken to Dr. Daniel Nixon myself and uh, had a remarkable interview with him uh, two, three years ago. And, you know, when you think about something as simple as a raspberry actually killing cancer cells in a 72-hour period, pretty powerful stuff. Well, these foods are all very powerful. There's a number of these um, antioxidant uh, articles that actually I've written and put on our website recently. So you might want to check out some of the articles on the website. Again, it's www.maxhealing.com and uh, freshened up. It was indeed recently freshened up by Adam Ng. Did a great job on it. And uh, you can take a look at some of those articles that are on there regarding food is medicine. And uh, once again, I think you want to remember that spice, if food is medicine, and I surely believe it is, then you might say that spice is the preeminent medicine. And uh, as we said earlier, cloves, 359,000. And uh, you move on down to things like turmeric at like 100 and I believe it's 179,000. So, you know, these are very, very easy foods and spices to incorporate into your daily plan and to build up your antioxidant numbers. Because in the final analysis, it's accumulative. It's all about accumulative. Uh, whenever I feel a sniffle or if I feel, you know, like the, uh, the winter dread is trying to kind of settle in and, and uh, take advantage of my immune system, 
One of the first things that I tend to do is I tend to get some turmeric. I have some organic turmeric root, turmeric root, and I get some organic cayenne pepper. In fact, I've always got them on hand. But I'll take a small amount of tomato sauce, and um, I'll actually put it on a burner, just warm it up, and I'll put a little bit of turmeric in there and a little bit of cayenne pepper in there and just sip it like you would a cup of tea just warm tomato sauce with some of these spices in there sometimes i'll put some oregano in there as well and uh, let me tell you those knock it right out whatever it is that seems to be trying to get at my immune system uh, a quick way to implement food and spice as medicine it'll just knock absolutely knock it right out the other point i want to bring up here too is when you think about the number of times that you're consuming empty calories and you're depriving yourself the opportunity to mass some of these cell-protecting numbers. Because, again, you think about, oh, by the way, an interesting point is the russet potato. The russet potato was one of the highest foods in antioxidants. The russet potato. So the difference between a russet potato and a, and a serving of potato chips, the potato chips are dead. They have zero antioxidants, okay? The russet potato has about 15,000. So what a difference between processed food and living food, all right? And then on top of it, as I say, too, if you're using, building up these numbers, using these, these fruits, these vegetables, these beans from time to time as a, as a substitute protein for a meal, um, and using more spices, uh, an example of how you can mass your numbers, you can have a lentil soup. Lentils are at 17,000. You can add uh, the turmeric in the 170,000 range. Uh, that, that's nearly 200,000 uh, points of oxygen radical support, uh, oxygen radical uh, absorbance support. So those are huge numbers there. And then for dessert, you decide to get a bunch of blueberries and apples and you put them uh, in a Pyrex. Put them in there with a little bit of clove and a little bit of cinnamon, and you bake them at 350 for 50 minutes, and now your numbers are well up around half a million, okay, as opposed to uh, eating fast food and maybe having the classic ice cream kind of dessert or the cookies or the cakes or the pies or whatever. So pretty easy to have a real good, wholesome meal that tastes delicious, and uh, certainly the, the fruit... Uh, Pyrex baked fruit dish that I just mentioned uh, is really like pie filling. It's it's hot out of the oven. It's your blueberries. Throw some raspberries in there, some apple slices, unsweetened pears, whatever. And uh, then you get uh, the cinnamon in there and the cloves in there. Now you're talking about hundreds of thousands, half a million, three quarters of a million points here. Uh, and, and, you know, and to live that way day in and day out, you're amassing numbers at the end of the day, week, month, and year that are just going to end up presenting a body that doesn't get sick. You know, um, an interesting story about our immune systems. Um, I don't know if um, anybody's ever read any of the Dirk Pearson or Sandy Shaw life extension stuff uh, back in the mid-'80s. Remarkable researchers. A bit kooky, but remarkable at the research end of things. But they tell us that um, if your immune system is fully supported and... If your immune system is fully supported through building up these antioxidant numbers on an ongoing basis, that the genetic immune body clock was designed to last 110 to 120 years. So in theory, when we think of the body as like only averaging 76.3 years, you're absolutely getting shortchanged here because your body, if fully supported with these numbers, with real foods, with wholesome foods, should make it 110 to 120 years. Build the numbers up, protect and defend your cells, and every time you eat these foods, you want to be thinking visually in terms of cell protection. It's for real. The science is here. So these foods are really, really important to, to your preservation process and to your healthy, wholesome living process, your longevity. So uh, we want folks to take a peek at some of this information. Again, it's O-R-A-C, ORAC Factor, and it's great stuff. Once again, uh, my friend Pat's website, a reading by Pat. Dot com. Uh, my website, of course, www.maxhealing.com. Take a peek, and uh, if you're interested in watching the Natural Health and Healing Show, we are podcast. So you can actually take a look at uh, the podcast of this of this broadcast, or listen to the broadcast, thanks to Adam Ng. 
And again, that's at www.maxhealing.com. Stay tuned for Bobby and Steve and the whole gang, of course, of Tomorrow's Dreams. They have a great program, a lot of live music from, uh, I'm sorry, a lot of local music that uh, should be, and occasionally live music as well. So give a listen. And uh, until next Wednesday, this is Mark Mincola reminding you all, please be wise, be aware, be well. Make it a healthy week. Good night. Thank you for joining Mark Mincola for the Natural Health and Healing Show. Call Mark each Sunday evening at 8 o'clock for the latest nutritional news.